Happy Friday and welcome to today's LinkedIn Live. It's Vemus and Tron. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm great. How are you, Rick? Hey, I'm I'm ready for the weekend. It has been a week to remember. We we've just got a lot going on. Everybody does. We've got our peers are rocking Cloud Field Day concurrently. We're rocking LinkedIn Live. We've already got a great crowd hanging in there. So I hope you have a great weekend. Um, we've got a good crowd. Let us know where you're from. One of the things I really love about LinkedIn Live is what what do I call it? What's the word I made up? I don't remember. <laughs> the map application. The map application, map application. Okay. That's right. We got to light up the map application. So drop in your country. It's bare now. We've got Ohio, New Jersey, Georgia, and the US. We've got Romania. We've got uh got our uh, team, Alina, helping us out operating the event. So drop us your country or your U.S. state or major city, and we will light the map and make it green. Good stuff. So, Melissa, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about one of my absolute favorites, and we're going to talk about not backup. We're not actually talking about backup today. No, 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 no. We're no. going to talk about recovering your data. Recovering your data. Why would you ever want to do that? I don't know. Ah. Well, we believe it or not, we even have content prepared for you. So let's jump over to the screen share here real quick. And, you know, first thing, uh, many recovery scenarios. I'm actually going to give you a little bit of history. We just released V11, as you know, and we're turning it up to 11. That's not totally new for everyone. We, you know, we, I don't know, uh, 200 plus new enhancements, right? Across cloud, software as a service, apps, virtual and physical. That's the whole Veeam story. But most of that is this one little bitty product we have called Beam Backup and Replication. So it's been a huge release. We're still promoting it, still going through some of the new things, but I thought I'd do something a little cheeky, Melissa. Oh, really? Yeah, so we know that there's a lot of recovery scenarios. So I wanna, go, I wanna go through some history. So I'm gonna start with okay, the quiz. Right. So in V7, I first had the idea to do this infographic of how many recovery scenarios are in V11. So uh, for those of you on the line, drop in your guess. How many recovery scenarios do you think were in V11? And Melissa, I'll take your best guess. Oh, this was before my time. Yeah. So let me think. I'm gonna go 12 seems kind of low. Uh, 38, I'm gonna go with it's not the highest. I'm using my multiple choice reasoning skills here. I'm gonna go with a solid 28. Solid 28, so close. Oh. So close, it's 26. So let me break this down a little bit. We used to do a lot of these infographics that kind of would tell you all the different recovery scenarios from the one agentless backup. And, you know, my thought was, especially at the time before we had the agent for Windows integrated and, and stuff like that, it was so many recovery scenarios from one agentless backup. I mean, no one could touch that. And and still to this day, as we build it through, you're going to be blown away. So what year was V7, Eric? Oh, boy. I want to say that was 2014. Oh, boy. We got the boss watching. We better behave. Uh -oh. But, uh, yeah, you know, I I think it was 2014 for V7 uh, well, or 2015. That's pretty good. Can't, can't that's pretty quite good remember. for that long ago. Yeah. And the thought was I wanted it. I like where we're going with this. So what I wanted to do is build on it, almost make it like a calendar. So let's go to the next level here. Okay, okay so Melissa and attendees, how many recovery scenarios were in 9.5? This was the base release, base release, not uh, update four. Okay, between seven and 9.5, there's no way it's 34. That's too close to 26. That's not happening. Okay. Beam innovates way more than that. Okay. 42, that's a trick answer, I feel like, because 42 is supposed to be the answer to everything. I don't think it is. I'm also going to eliminate the highest again, so I'm going to go 57. You are going to guess correctly Yay! with 57 because you know what? I actually skipped one. I couldn't find. Uh, it's on my old computer at home. It's not like I didn't lose my data, but I had a V9 one that was the 42. But anyways, you are correct. It was 57 with the base of 9.5. And this is really where we started to get into, like, you're, you're seeing the grid, almost like a calendar. And uh, my friend Enterprise Manager is there. Yeah, Enterprise Manager made it to the party. And I had to go steal a whole bunch of old logos to get this stuff. I had to go deep into the archives. In fact, I even found one I couldn't find. But I have it at home. all those explorers. That's pretty good stuff right there. Explorers. I love great the explorers. Stuff. Cool. So, yeah, you know, the thought is having many ways out of recovery. This is really why we do this, okay? And let me explain what I mean by that. 
is you have a lot of things that can happen bad with your data, right? <laughs> I mean, I have nothing but evidence of bad things happening to good hardware. Yeah, terrible things happen to yeah, lots over... of different things. It might not be your whole data center. It could just be that, I don't know, some important person lost their Excel file or put in something wrong or broke it or who knows what, right? And you don't always need to bring a whole VM back either. There is the phenomenon called over-recovery. Yeah, don't need it. All right, we got we got a word from the producers that the application is ready. So let's take a look. We're All gonna right, have, let's see who's watching. Oh, well, we got Texas, New Hampshire. I know I know somebody up there. <laughs> California, Brazil, Kenya, Germany. Oh wow, a lot of good. Um, you know, America's representation, North Carolina. Pretty well, good. Come. Pretty good. Connecticut. I like it. I like it. In the main of Europe, we've got Italy, Denmark, Germany, Istanbul, Kenya. That's, that's actually not in Europe. Uh, Romania, Belgium, you know, we've got Dallas. We've There's there's Kenya. There's Tunisia. So welcome everyone. And India. apparently Czech Republic too. Don't yeah, Czech, Czech Republic, Rick. That's right. That's right. It's tough. They come in quick. You're coming in quick. We're all watching. India, Pune, welcome. Garage. Awesome. Tennessee, Dan, sorry. We'll get you there in France. Uh, it's a lot coming in, but definitely let us know where you're coming from. But, you know, recovery is the topic. And when we think about recovery, you know, Melissa, over recovery is something I think people need to worry about. You don't want to recover too much data. Exactly. Especially if you don't need it. Right. Yeah. That's going to impact. I don't know everything. It's going to waste your time. Right. Like it's, well, you might go and grab other, the file. Be done with it. Yeah. yeah. You might incur other data loss. That's the kind of the other angle. And what I mean by that worst example, I, worst I like example. to gravitate to the new SQL server database instant recovery that's pretty good you can recover one database not the whole database server because other databases might be right. impacted and it's so, big right that was really? that was the history let's get closer to the reality all right i'm moving on down all you right this is i can't play this game anymore because i know this answer oh that's true because this is actually the current one let's go for the chat now i do have okay, a couple, let's go in the second, chat. couple of seconds delay here for any of you watching on the line v10 which as of two weeks and two days ago, was the latest and greatest. But we've moved on to V11, and we're going to get to that here in a second. We've turned it up to 11. Well, there you go. How many recovery options, for those of you watching on the stream, how many recovery options do you think V10 had? Got some answers. Okay, Titus. Titus, you win. You win not a prize, but you win you the don't first, win anything. You, you win a shout out. First answer. You got it, Titus. Indeed. So let's go over to the next one here. That's right. 83. Version 10 had over 83 recovery scenarios. And it's just so powerful when you think about all the different things. And you know, it's situational. If I zoom into PowerShell or if I look at pulling things off from tape and the agents kind of get can conflate it into backup and yeah and don't forget network shares right that was basically That's one right. of the big features of v10 right nas backup out of the gate here you go for recovery scenarios with a brand new technology like how cool is that no it, it was a big deal i think nas is a new data source and you know to recover actually told a broader story of like it's really starting to function like a platform i mean we have a lot of products but so much of it has its heart and soul here from veeam backup and replication uh, so yeah, Danny, you got it right too. <laughs> one you got as well. But we're on the edge of something new. Two weeks and two days to be specific. And that is V11, which just came out. So now here's the deal. I got to give credit where credit is due. Yes, absolutely. This, this is an idea that I started a couple of years ago. And uh, Andrew on our team, who's presenting live over at Cloud Field Day, Right now, actually, uh, he helps drive this, right? So V11, this is the, the newest one. Hasn't been seen yet in the public. We're going to be putting it out on the blog here in a bit. But I'm going to open it up. I don't even have a multiple choice. So for the attendees. Yeah, everybody guess. Just yeah, drop in some that. numbers. So here's a hint. It's higher than 83. So uh, you have that. But how much higher is it? Oh. I don't know. Well, actually, I do Not know. Much but uh, we know. But what do y'all in the, you know, collective plural, what do we all think? Is how many recovery scenarios with wow. V11? And before I forget, drop in 
the in the we got some great activity going with the numbers, but also let us know. Yeah, let us where know you're where from. you're watching from. Yeah, because I I'm diverting the um the the interaction not just from the location, but to some of the guesses here. So, yeah, Danny, you can guess. Uh, you might even <laughs> guess right. Uh, but uh, good guess there, Dan. We got Dan and Danny going after it here. This is really interesting. So, a uh, couple of the numbers are coming in here. Good, good. Wallace, nice one. Ooh, McKinde, you, I like it. Not quite. All right, but let's show it here. We do have a little delay, so I might not have got your, all of your numbers in, but it's 91. And I'm still having fun. This is awesome. This is an incredible number. Um, you know, Andrew, when he breaks this down, what do we do, Melissa? We break it down across categories. So let's yes. take a look at this. Here's I, the I just want to pick out one thing because this card yeah. is getting big. There's a lot of way to recover and people might be sitting here thinking, wow, like 91 ways to recover. That sounds really difficult. No, it's not. Everything kind of uses the same, might not be the same interface, but everything works the same way logically in Veeam. I like to tell everybody if you've con configured a backup job, you've configured a NAS backup job, a CDP protection job, you've configured everything, right? Veeam is very, very simple to use. And I don't want people thinking, oh, if there's 91 different ways to do something. I, how am I ever going to wrap my head about it around it? It is super simple. And, you know, the UI walks you through all of it. Yeah, I like to say that nothing in Veeam, especially Veeam backup and replication, uh, nothing in Veeam backup and replication is more than seven clicks of a wizard. Oh, I like that. I'm going to steal that. Yeah, and now the the Vedro, the the orchestrator product, does have some areas where it'll exceed that, but it does some really advanced. It's about the worst case scenario is about ten clicks to make a DR plan, so it's not that far yeah. behind. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and count when we're done here. Yeah, exactly. So, and and I think that that that's that's acceptable and that makes sense. But when you talk about you know day to day backups, day to day recoveries, day to day sure backup recovery verification, which we should be doing anyways, that rule applies there. And you know I think it's also it's important that when you look at this, and we're soon going to publish this out in the blog, it's my goal that every administrator prints this out and has it at their desk or at their ready otherwise, because it's like, oh, goodness, what's going to happen now? And <laughs> I, I printed it out. Well, I got a lot of stuff on my wall, but I, it's over here. And I kind of, that was kind of my logic, you know, and I wanted something cool, a desk resource, et cetera. There are a couple of times where I used to hand it out at in-person events, nice laminated high quality print and something like that. Uh, you know, but if you walk through the the storage, cloud, extra and automation, tape, you know, service provider technologies, application explorers, it's just so there. comprehensive. It's like, you never know what's gonna happen when things go wrong, but let's, and I realize you might be like, oh, what does that actually even say? So that's why we have a zoom in. So let's go take a look at one of these in particular. Uh, this, so, this is a good one. Yeah, this, this is, is pretty like, much table stakes, right? Product. Very yeah. general, simple. What do you is, have a favorite on here, Rick? That's my question to you because I haven't made my favorite yet. I was going to have you pick a favorite first. So which uh, you pick as a favorite? I will take Secure Restore for a thousand, please, Rick. So the oh. ability to run a virus scan as you're restoring a VM to make sure if you're trying to recover from some kind of cybersecurity event, you're not recovering an infected machine. And if infection is detected, you have a couple options. Throw it away go to an earlier restore point or start it up with the network disconnected so you can dive in there and maybe do a little forensics or whatever you need to do. That, that is my favorite on the list. I like, um, I will take, I'll give you a thousand terabytes for that answer. I will take the conversion, the second one, V to V. Yeah, that's, that was, that's a close second. That's one of my favorites too. And you know, let me explain what that is. A lot of people actually really don't know that that's a capability. You can take any image-based backup and restore it to VMware and Hyper-V now. You can also restore that to Amazon EC2 and Azure VM. This is so powerful. I mean, you could be in a situation of you have nothing but your backups and you need to restore somewhere, whether it's to the cloud, whether it's to uh, you know a new hypervisor, whether it's to a hypervisor you didn't know you were gonna be using, AKA <laughs> Windows 10, for example. So there's an incredible portability especially in, you know, maybe unforeseen circumstances. But I'll also twist it a little bit differently. You know, the Windows 10 hypervisor, which is an instant recovery technique, that could also be more of a, dare I call it, ad hoc data lab. 
You know what I mean? So I could almost okay, do something like okay, kind of on my I'll own. On yeah, on my own little <laughs> plan around, right? So the flexibility is so, so strong here. And actually even first class disc recovery for one of those vSphere disc capabilities. I'm not even like super VMware. I, I'm actually not allowed to play VMware anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm only Hyper-V now, but uh, that apparently it's a thing and we, we can do that. So uh, if you're using it, we're there. So let's go to the next section here. Now, this is one that I think you like a little <sighs> bit as well. And yeah, that's agents. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, let's see. I'll pick one. Well, actually, you can pick first and then I'll pick one as a favorite. <sighs> Oh, okay. I'm going to try to, okay. I'm going to go and pick what you don't think I was going to pick. I'm going to pick agent for Mac um, because agent for Mac is the newest agent in V11. And now we can protect all those Mac based end user devices, right? So that can be really handy. I can't tell you how many times I've like almost dropped, dropped a cup of coffee on my laptop in the last year, or I have, but I didn't get an important part of the laptop and I survived it. But I'm sure there's a lot of people less fortunate than me out there. So I'm going to go agent for Mac, which is probably not what you expected me to say at all. That was completely what I expected you to pick, really? actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will go with the P2C conversion again. I, You know, the portability. Yeah. You know, and P2C, I, actually, it's kind of funny. I went a different direction on Twitter last night. P to C or V to C, I'm thinking physical and virtual to cloud, but apparently that means to container. So I totally oh, took the conversation. Oh, okay. <laughs> it should be it should be like V to K or P to K. That's, that's what it should I be. I like to call the agent restores to the P to V easy button, right? Because I've done lots of P to Vs in my day and they're not fun. Right. They're, I would okay, maybe they're like kind of fun with Veeam, because I think Veeam is fun, but uh they're super simple. Let's go with that. Because people well, might, might not buy that it's fun to restore things. It solves a real problem, right? It a lot does. of times when you do a, a conversion of platform, it's because there's a reason. Like I'm mm -hmm. tired of the cost and the space and or I'm tired of it sitting here and people do change platforms. There's an absolute good reason for it. And the recovery to the cloud, for example, so that would be P2C, you'd be surprised how efficient that is, especially when you're doing it in a planned mode, right? So live in a world of, the scale out backup repository yeah. with copy. Okay, mode. we'll schedule that to go do whatever. Yeah. It's not. It's not that. It's not schedulable. I'll, I'll give it. That's the one knock currently. But well, it I is the wrong word. I apologize. Scriptable. You can script yes. it. So you can have some fun that way. But it it will do a lot better than organizations think. <clears throat> All right. Final call for the map. We do have a couple more. So thank you for that. Uh, we've got Tennessee, France. Slovakia, Canada, Tennessee, welcome. I'm going to Tennessee this year. Looking forward to that. A little bit of vacation. Um, I love making the map green. I need a I need a boom topic someday. We're just gonna whoosh, just just go green one of these days. Europe represented, UK, thank you. Uh, looks like uh, a couple new places. Um, my geography is failing me. I see Romania and Turkey still, Italy. Um, I don't want to get them wrong. Netherlands. Nope, that's Belgium. I got it wrong. <laughs> you can always help on this too, Melissa. Oh, no. All you, Regatron. Okay. Awesome. But definitely thank you both for letting us, thank you all for letting us know where you're from. So our last segment here, something near and dear to Melissa's heart. She doesn't even know what it is. Storage. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. So, Tell me about Veeam Explorer for storage snapshots in general, because I think there's a huge opportunity to, that organizations need to know that this is a recovery type that they can enjoy. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny, we talked a lot about storage snapshots this week, right? If you're using a storage array where integration is supported by Veeam, and trust me, you probably are, you can go on veeam.com and see the full list, you can actually... Uh, cracking your storage snapshots with the Veeam Explorer, right? So you have all these different resource types directly from your storage snapshots. I love storage snapshots for like a thousand different reasons. They're really great, but sometimes the native tools that might come with a storage array are a little weak in the um, ability to restore things and take a deep dive through and look around. Like if you've ever browsed your storage array in Veeam, it's like super simple. It's like two clicks and you can see all your stuff you could possibly need to restore. Um, it's just another level of, I see Rick counting something on his fingers. I was I, counting clicks. Clicks? How many clicks is it? I think it is two. I think, yeah, you're right. I, I think it's two clicks too. 
Um, <laughs> but it's really easy to kind of get that visibility into your storage, right? And because a lot of people actually choose Beam to drive their snaps as well, they have a pretty aggressive snap schedule, which makes it really great for some of those um, you know, things you might have to restore. My favorite example here is probably like the guest files, right? Oh no, someone messed up some file someplace and whatever, just go in and get it, right? Just crack right in there get the file restore. We're done here. We don't even have to restore the whole VM. Well, one step better is you don't have to go to last night's backup or however no, no. farther the recovery point is set. And you're, right. you know, the Veeam Explorer for storage snapshots really is one of these techniques that will couple the highest R, sorry, no, the best, not the highest, the best <laughs> RPO and the best RTO because it's a very quick mechanism for recovery. Yes. I've spoken to some organizations who have used the second option there, the instant VM recovery, really to get it's out of really fast. Uh, you know? It's really, really fast. That's probably like my favorite thing about it. The the restores with applications across SQL databases and you know the Active Directory. And actually, I'm almost kind of upset because Andrew could have called SQL and Oracle different, and we would be at 92 and would call Exchange SharePoint. <laughs> three separate and we would then be at 95. All right, I don't well, know. you could technically separate instant VM and disk too, if you really um, want. That's what I'm getting at. Maybe I need to audit this stuff a little bit more closely, but no, we do. Well, we don't, we, we don't want to go too crazy with the numbers, right? Keep yeah. Kind of consumable. Actually, I really, what I really wanted was a prime number for this, but 91 is not a prime number, it's 13 times seven, so bummer. Bummer. So anyways, well, we're going to start bringing it home. Thank you all so much for watching here, but I hope that this was informative and a little bit fun, a little bit different. This 91 ways to recover, great way that you can, you know, be able to recover different types of media, uh, me, uh, data with Veeam. There are three things I want to highlight as a wrap up. Uh, one, a trial. We've got a, a special link here. If you haven't used Veeam before, you can download a trial. That's one of the things that makes it so easy for Veeam audiences to try. Just go to veeam.com, download a trial or community edition. You can have it in your hands today and, and start playing with some of these. And actually, good shout to the storage snapshot integration for recovery. What edition is that included in, Melissa? Uh, that is not included in community edition, unfortunately. It, I thought it was. I thought it wasn't. The storage, the, the Veeam Explorer for storage snapshot should be. Um. No. Okay. Whoops. We're live. I could have, <laughs> I, I'm almost positive it is. We'll find out. I'll find out and I'm going to update this chat or something because I, I, I swear it is. One thing I want to also highlight is a new thing that we have. So if you're looking at V11 and you want to get started, the Upgrade Center. I put a lot of work into this because I wanted to have a resource that kind of aggregates everything. Uh, Anton Gostev in R&D has a top issues tracker. There is the tech documentation. There's where you go to download. It's where you may need to get a new license. I've got one resource for that all to happen right there at the Upgrade Center. And coming soon, we're going to have the blog with the full downloadable uh, resource for the 91 ways to recover. Awesome. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me here today. My pleasure, Rick. And for those of you who want to join us Monday, we got a really interesting topic. We got a special one, actually. Michael Cade and Dave Russell are going to be bringing Kubernetes and cloud native stuff to the LinkedIn Live uh, on the Industry Insights. I don't want to call it the Dave and Jason show. I got to give it its right name. But we've got Dave and Michael on Monday. So, uh, Melissa, I hope you have a great weekend. You too, Rick. And thanks, and everybody, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining on behalf of our producers and the global Veeam marketing team who brought this content to you. Appreciate you watching. Have a great weekend.